Hi, um, I'm Yvette Fuentes and this is my video blog Multiverse and this is Daniele Facho, my colleague and friend who's visiting. So I did manage to convince him to do this uh, interview very spontaneously so we haven't planned anything and, and so on. So let's uh, hope that it goes well. So uh, Daniele is a professor in Harriet Watt and he does experiments, the real thing, and he uh, has a very interest very close to mine. Um, as I've been telling you, I'm interested in the overlap of quantum mechanics and general relativity. And I think that we are um, going through very interesting times because quantum experiments have uh, progressed a lot. And um, very soon they're going to be reaching relativistic regimes and we're going to be able to learn about the overlap of quantum mechanics and general relativity through the experiment directly. So Daniel is already making experiments in, in this, um, with this uh, idea in mind and I wanted to ask Daniel, do you want to tell us something about um, yourself and what yeah. experiments you're doing and your group? Okay, doing? yeah, so um, I work mainly with light. I've always worked with, uh, with light over the years. Um, originally just doing sort of classical, pretty standard experiments, but uh, you know, the, more you, the more you study things, the more you realize that we don't really know what is going on. And you know, even today you still get papers published that ask a question, and even have a question in the title, what is a photon? Mm -hmm. okay, so what is this elementary quantum particle that builds up light? And it's still an open question. That's and, very, yeah. very interesting what you said, because I just made a video just before you mm -hmm. came in, mm -hmm. and it was about time, and I was also saying how, um, I hope that we're recording, yeah, and I heard a funny noise, and so I was just saying how the, the notion of time itself, mm -hmm. um, if you really think about it, it's difficult to, to describe, and you can always find an aspect of it that we don't understand. Yeah. So now exactly. it's very interesting that you're saying, well, light, maybe you would think that as physicists, this is one of the first things that you learn in the career is um, the electromagnetic field and so on. And mm, their idea is relatively old and that you go on so many years now and you still don't really understand yeah. all of it. So what do you think are some of these aspects that so, you don't really understand? But I mean, there's, there's you, if you really start asking the deep questions, you know, what, what, what things, try to really understand what things are, you quickly run into trouble all over the place. And you run into trouble if you try to understand what a photon really is. Uh, I'd say you probably run into even more trouble if you try to understand even uh, sort of simpler concepts that we, we think we understand, like time. What is really time? Why does time go in one direction, not in both? Uh, and then you can even ask, what is space? Seems obvious question, but we don't even really know what space is. What I find is very disconcerting is that we don't really know what mass is. We think we know what mass because we all we have a mass and we weigh something, but we don't really know what mass is. And and I have, I guess it's up for discovery. But the, it seems that the underlying theme here and the unifying point is that ultimately we don't know how to combine quantum physics with with gravity. Yes. And these all these concepts are sort of uh, coming together in this. So in this my, field. my my aim in this blog is to explain to people, but very slowly. So we're very far from that yet, but slowly through different steps. Is um, what's quantum mechanics, what's yeah. general relativity, and mm -hmm. why we don't understand the overlap of, of these theories. But I think it's also very interesting to the people, to like non physicists and so on, that might have these ideas. Um, of oh my God, scientists understand so many things, and I and um, mm. we have advanced so much, and this is very true. You yeah. know, all the technologies that we can see and be amazed with nowadays come from our understanding of physics. But what I think that you're raising, and it's very interesting, is to see that although we can do fantastic things with technologies, and you can see the lasers, and you can see all all of these amazing things, the the fundamental concepts, like you said, like light, mm -hmm. what's like, what's time, what's mass, we don't really understand. And I think this is perhaps for people very, uh, very um, interesting to know that yeah. this is going on. Yeah. So, so exactly. So we, as I said, we, 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 we we're not working with gravity in the sense of mass. Uh, we, we use light, and originally we were using over the past several years. 
we've been using very intense uh, laser beams to sort of create artificial gravitational fields in the lab and then study how light interacts with these. But they're not real gravitational fields, they're artificial in much the same way. And the analogy that we use is, is with, with water. So if you have a flowing river and you stand, you put your feet in the river, you'll, see, you'll feel the water try to pull you along. And there's a direct a analogy there with the gravitational fields trying to pull you in towards the center of the Earth, for example. And it, it's been pointed out, I mean, Bill and Bruce have pioneered this idea that this analogy actually goes a lot deeper. It's not some kind of hand-waving, intuitive uh, picture, but it does allow you to even build sort of quantum theories based on this analogy that could verify the, the sort of the deeper, the fuller quantum theories in the presence of real gravity. So you can really go and look for quantum effects in a flowing body of water, in a flowing river, for example. Um, can't actually do it in a river because it's not cold enough, the conditions aren't right to see quantum effects. But in the lab using lasers, you can create experiments where, where you can do this. But now, in sort of more recent years and times, have been trying to push more towards uh, trying to combine everything we've learned about quantum optics and quantum mechanics using light uh, to studying, studying real gravity. So we've been, we've been and we still are, uh, developing a series of technologies. You mentioned you know, we have all these great technologies. Um, this is one of the interesting aspects actually, that as physicists you strive to try and understand the big questions, but to do that you need to go one step at a time, understand first some of the smaller questions. So for example, how do I build a super sensitive uh, interferometer that can measure the coherence time of a single photon? So some you know, some yeah. kind of question. But then you discover that once you've done that, actually often it turns out it's still not good enough to try and do something with gravity, but maybe it's really good for building a new kind of um, microscope for bioimaging, yeah. which is one of the things we're looking at right now. Well, one of the things that I find very, very interesting, and is um, more or less what I'm trying to do theoretically as well uh, with respect to the technologies, is that, um, say for example, uh, we want to learn something about atoms. Mm -hmm. So then we invent a machine, which would be a microscope, that allows you to see them, mm -hmm. right? And then, but once you build the machine, then the machine allows you to build more theory, because right. then it allows exactly. you to discover a new world in a sense, right. because you really didn't know exactly what was there, and you're opening a, a world in that um, direction. No, so um, that's also what is fantastic about the discovery of gravitational waves using LIGO, that that's sort of um, uh, something that we could not perceive before with our technology and that we don't really understand uh, fully with our theory, but now having an apparatus that lets you measure it will allow us to start um, uh, knowing the world more deeply. Yeah, yes, yeah, indeed. And, and LIGO too has, I mean, there's the number of fields that that technology has had an impact on is, is I mean, the list is huge. So it's not just about detecting the, the gravitational waves, but the, ultimately, I and mean, that's, that's the grand challenge, it's about understanding how quantum mechanics um, interacts with gravity. So, and, and the interesting thing is that, so we're not using mass, so how can you use, you know, if you don't have anything Gravity is all about having mass. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have mass, how can you go and study quantum quantum or quantum effects in, in gravitational fields? And this is one of the interesting things that, that, that the Einstein equations tell you that the gravitational field is essentially just a curvature of space-time, and that curvature also acts on photons. Yeah. So if you understand how to deal with photons, and then you can try looking at how these are modified, how their entanglement properties, chain that we've been discussing the past couple of days, how the, the entanglement of photons, the quantum properties of photons, uh, change in the presence of a gravitational field. And ultimately, I mean, the question I would like to try and answer uh, in the next, or I'd like to see answered, I don't, it doesn't necessarily have to be me, but I think there's an outstanding question that needs to be answered, and that is, does gravity need to be quantized at all? Yes. Or is there a quantum theory of gravity. 
because it's all very well to spend time trying to look for a quantum theory of gravity. But usually it goes the other way around. You know there's a theory and then you go and try and develop it. Yeah. But we're, we're so lost at the moment, yeah. we don't even know if gravity, I mean, there, there's there are plenty of people out there who are, are saying that gravity isn't actual, an actual force. It's not something you need to be worried about. It's not a fundamental force of nature. I, I'm not sure I'd go as far as saying that, but there, there definitely is, I think, the big question that needs to be answered in the next year is somehow, is, is gravity a theory that needs to be quantized? Yes. And you can look for evidence of that without having to go to these crazy Planck scales or uh, yeah. trying to do experiments, which at the moment with the technology that we have now are just completely impossible. Mm -hmm. There are easier experiments, which are still extremely hard, but definitely easier where you can try to see if there's any evidence of gravity uh, playing a role in, in a quantum system. Yes. So one of the things that I, I want to do with the blog as well is like slowly explain people what quantum gravity is. Mm -hmm. I mean, now you're probably just um, hearing things that you're not very familiar, but the thing is to get the idea that um, Daniel is doing experiments are, uh, that are in the overlap of quantum mechanics and, and, and relativity, and that go to try to understand if we need a quantum theory of gravity. And um, that is something that I would say is perhaps the most important open question of physics of our days. Is there mm -hmm. Uh, I think so. a, a quantum theory of, of gravity and there are several proposals but I think that the the, the main problem with understanding um, uh, this overlap is that we don't really have experiments to guide our theories and what we've been seeing from from history is that when physics makes the biggest uh, progress is when you have this interaction between the experiment and the theory and the problem is that we haven't had the opportunity of having experiments at these space-time regimes that we were talking about before and that that makes um, theory very difficult because people come up with beautiful ideas and they develop fantastic mathematics but we don't know if that beautiful mathematics has any connection with the real world or not. Yeah, yeah. And likewise the experiments. And we need to know we, we, the experiments need to be informed by theory. So yeah. we, we need to know which experiments make sense and, and which don't, and then try and develop the technology in that direction. Yeah. Okay. So and I think I'll just uh, finish with one more question, okay. which is if you could like dream, like saying, having all, because we were talking about how for experimentalists, for example, how money is important because mm. it allows you to well, you know, improve your science and, and uh, materialize what you want to do. So, so if you could dream and have any resources that you would like to have, what experiment would you like to make? Oh, that's uh, <laughs> so infinite, with infinite money, with infinite resources. it would be really good to sort of have, uh, I think, all these interferometers and all these experiments. I think one of the really exciting developments that's that the, it's the direction things are going in right now is getting everything out into space. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're away from all the vibrations, all the problems you have on Earth. Uh, you can make these things huge, uh, huge sensitivity. I mean, tests that have been performed in the past several months have shown that you can still you know, have very sensitive objects working up in space. I think that's, that's kind of like the, the ultimate frontier. Uh, this kind of physics. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. So we go back to work now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>